So let's be real here. Thinking about this is going to be really, really hard for some people. What? Me? Why would I ever leave my camp? I'm gonna work there forever and every single summer is gonna be the best summer ever. And if you're the type of person who thinks, wow, if I ever left camp, I mean, how would it even function? Who would do this? Who would run this program? What would they even do without me? I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Camp is gonna be fine without you. It really will. And camp will always be a part of you and you a part of it, even if you're not physically there. But I promise, even if you're not there, camp will go on. So I'm here to give you permission. It's okay to start thinking about if it's time to move on to another camp. Happy campers, Jason here back again with another video. And you know, we always want the good times to last forever. We want those good summer memories to stay with us for the rest of our lives. But you know, at some point in time, it's going to be time to move on from camp. And, and this is a very personal decision and an internal reflection that you each are gonna have to have with yourselves. And for some people, like I said earlier, it's going to be pretty difficult, but it's an important thing to have. Now, whether or not it's time to move on and maybe look at another camp, or maybe just be done with working summers at camp is going to be really, really personal. It's going to vary from person to person, but hopefully this video will help you kind of know the signs to look for and what to listen to and, and things to look out for. So without any more further ado, here are my top signs that it's time to move on to another camp. And sign number one is that something's changed. Now that something that's changed could be you or it could be something at camp. Maybe something's come up and you're not as easily able to commit to an entire summer anymore. Maybe the idea of spending your entire summer in a cabin full of screaming 12 year olds isn't as appealing as it used to be. If you're like me, maybe you've gotten older and you've realized that all of your coworkers are now a lot younger than you and you're the oldest counselor and you really don't connect with the people you work with anymore. People change, our needs change, that's all part of being human. But hey, it's also possible that that change is something at camp, maybe new ownership or a new director. Or maybe the camp program itself is going to look really, really different because there's, you know, a pandemic going on. Big, huge, gigantic changes at camp are a totally valid reason for you to then take a step back and look at possibly making changes yourself. <laughs> because change is coming either way, and so a lot of people will use this as an opportunity to sort of be in charge of that change. If I'm going to be working for a new director, well then, why don't I get to choose who that new director is at a different camp? And if you're somebody who has a really hard time with change and you know that about yourself and you've only ever seen camp run in this certain way or by this certain person and all of a sudden that's going to be different, well, that's going to be really, really difficult. You're not wrong. Same joke, two weeks in a row, too much? Let me know. Leave a comment down in the comment box. So the next indicator that it might be time to move on from your camp is if there's a lack of growth opportunities for you. Now look, it's every camp director's hope that their staff will be both challenged and will grow as the summer goes on. But if you're such an amazing staff member that nothing at camp really challenges you anymore and pushes you because you know how to do it all, well then, as your director, I'm gonna recommend that you look for that challenge and growth elsewhere. Now, don't get me wrong, it is super satisfying to be that person at camp who knows how to do everything, who everybody comes to and everybody can depend upon. But if there's nothing at camp that challenges you anymore, not only does that inhibit your growth, but it also kind of hinders your staff's growth as well because they need to learn how to do those things that you've always been relied on to do. Similarly, those growth opportunities might not exist because there's already people in the positions that would challenge you. We once had a lifeguard at a camp that I worked at that would have made an amazing waterfront director. That was where his next challenge lie. But do you know what we also had at that camp? An amazing waterfront director. And this waterfront director was still finding ways to challenge himself and to grow. And he was really, really starting to hit his stride. I mean, what would you have done in that situation? Tell the lifeguard to hang tight for three, four years until the waterfront director finally decided it was time to move on? Or would he be better served going on to a new camp in a waterfront director role there and having a great time while being pushed and challenged in the new position? Now, the next sign that it might be a good idea to start thinking about moving on to another camp. Hopefully this doesn't apply to too many of you but it's that you got fired. 
Now look, I've heard about people who were dismissed from their jobs early because of one dumb mistake that they made and they use that as a reflection opportunity to really grow from that mistake and have an amazing summer the next summer. But the reality is that a lot of camp directors are really, really hesitant to do this and with good reason. And it can also create confusion amongst the staff about what the policies are. Like this person did this thing, they got terminated and now they're back? Is, is it okay now that they did this? Does, was it actually not a really big deal? Where Where's the line? What is the rule? And also think to yourself, if you got fired, do you have a reputation now? Whether it's deserved or not, do you have a reputation at camp now because of this thing that happened? And I know it can be difficult if you got fired from some place that you were a camper at or you've worked at for a very, very long time. You don't know anywhere else, but more often than not, it's better to just cut your losses, move on from the experience, learn from it, but then tell the next job, the next director that you interview with about how you grew from that and start with a fresh and clean slate at a new camp. Now the next reason why you might want to move on from your camp is my favorite and that's that you're looking to learn how to do things differently. So here's what I found fascinating about the first time that I went to go and work at a different camp. You can have two camps that on paper look extremely similar. Programs are very similar, the activities that they do, the same demographics of campers served, all of that stuff, but in practice those camps are completely different. I mean, the best analogy that I can think of is it's sort of like different flavors of ice cream. I mean, yeah, it's still ice cream. Like imagine going your entire life only knowing about vanilla ice cream and then somebody introduces you to Ben and Jerry's. You're gonna be like, oh my God, I didn't even know that you could do this this way. And that's what it's like going to work at a second camp. You're gonna have these experiences popping up all the time that are familiar. It's still ice cream, I mean, camp, but they're going to be slightly different and it's those little pop-ups that are gonna keep it so exciting and so refreshing for you. So if camp is starting to feel a little bit stale to you, same cheer, same song, same kids, then maybe it's time to start looking at moving on to another camp. But hey, remember, all of that time that you spent at your last camp isn't worth nothing. You've still got all of those experiences and all of those different ways of doing stuff that you're gonna bring with you to your new camp. So everybody wins. And finally, the last sign that I have that it might be time for you to think about moving on to another camp is going to be if your headspace or your heart space aren't 100% into it. If either your head or your heart are telling you that it might be time to move on, then it's a good idea to start listening to them. If both of them aren't 100% committed to returning to camp this summer, it's not a very realistic expectation that those feelings are going to improve between now and the start of next summer. And it's not very fair to your campers if you're not 100% committed to them and their experience. Because after all, remember, camp is for the campers. So I truly hope that for the sake of you and your camp and your campers, that if you're not 100% on board with going back to camp next summer, that you don't force it. Ooh, kind of a bit of a downer to end on this week. Sorry about that. But hey, this is the time of year we need to look deep into ourselves and figure out what we need in order to be successful for next summer. So that's gonna do it for this week, guys. Thank you very much for sticking around. Go ahead and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you really, really enjoyed it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Really, really helps out the channel. With that, I'll see you guys next time. All right, campers, lights out.